Good morning, folks. Shocking galactic physics today. Weather as well. We've got two brightish points of failing sunspot groups on the disk here, so let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day. Southern coronal holes, the bright points of those failed active regions, no eruptive behavior. We have about 36 hours to wait for the coronal hole stream from that southern opening, and in the meantime, as forecast, everything is calming and quieting in geospace and the magnetosphere. Top weather story by a mile. Category 3 typhoon about to hit Taiwan. A slight change in the forecast couldn't spare the island nation, but it did change the total motion northward, and that means China is up next. Huge band accumulation before the circulation actually arrives. And of course, it is no surprise that the largest quake of the day happened here. Shared numerous papers over the years on the typhoon quake connection in the West Pacific. Okay, let's ease into the major galactic astrophysics with aesthetic pieces first. Starting here at Earth with a new sunburn map from NASA, they deliver the risk during every month of the year here. Up next, we're sticking with pretty images, but we're coming out to space. The Serpent. After what seemed like a century since the ESO's last real science update, they have used VST to not only resolve the figure in greater detail, but create a 3D map of the region as well the benefit of using the entire planetary scope resources. Lastly, on the aesthetics front, we're at the galactic level now. This is NGC 5866, and we look at it within a degree or so of being perfectly edge-on, one of the closest to that edge-on views we do see in the heavens. So now that we've arrived at the galactic level, let's go to quasars. An open problem exists here. What is up with some that look red and others that look blue? Well, it turns out that the red ones are a trick, the universe Loki impression. The red color is just the dust and gases heating up and re-emitting the light. When the cosmic wind strips the system of its material, a blue quasar is revealed in the middle, and they say that's the case 100% of the time. That then leads into calming and lessens star formation into an older galaxy like ours. We're coming to our own galaxy next and finding a plasma nucleus, mainstream named black hole, with an 8-minute pulse burst pattern. It is between us and the super core of the galaxy, and they say that, more interestingly, is the visual light brightness dips that fluctuate in duration with the pulses. No such activity has ever been seen in any object in the history of science. Also never seen, dark matter. And in fact, it is taking a hit this morning in large-scale mapping as ALMA wrecks Hubble-based math. The squares have galaxies that Hubble can't see. They are seen on the right there by ALMA. These are the most massive galaxies in the early universe, and they have been almost entirely missed by modelers of the cosmos. Not only that, but there are so many of them that it exceeds the feasible production with the dark matter model. Last but not least, a terrific paper on the star-forming regions of galaxies and how they are impossible to model, so we use assumptions. Here we learn how these assumptions hurt the field, and especially with that concept of not modeling reality. That was just one of the points we made in the Plasma Cosmology movie. We hope to get you out some professor responses and a special video here in the next two days. We greatly appreciate your support. It's less than a week until the second movie comes out right here on the channel. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.